got another water-based marker video for you. We are looking at the Crayola Signature Blending Markers. These were requested and I picked them up through Amazon. We get 16 blending markers in the Signature Metal Box. Crayola Blending Markers offer 14 rich saturated colors for superior blending. Featuring two colorless blenders, markers that lighten shades or remove areas of color altogether. Use them to create Ooh. Use them to achieve the exact shade you need or create textures and spot effects. Crayola Signature Blending Markers work best on blending marker paper. Try our what? Our Crayola Signature Blend and Shade Inspiration Pad. So I actually have a lot of Copic paper. I will probably not try the Crayola Signature Blend and Shade Inspiration Pad unless many, many of you are like, hey, you need to try it. Other than that, I'm not gonna try it. So we get red, orange, yellow, canary, green, sea green, blue, cornflower, violet, wisteria, bubblegum, peach, ah, oh, that's just the sticker, slate black and 2X colorless blender. And illustrated artwork shows what you can do with Crayola Signature blending markers. I am happy to, I am happy to see that they're going with like more rendered, more adult artwork for the Crayola Signature line. Not that there's anything at all wrong with kids art, I love it, but since they are trying to appeal to an older demographic, it's really nice to see, oh, hey, this is something that was created. I need to go check out their YouTube and see if they have a video of how the artist made that. And then you actually get a really nice tin, and that's why I was complimenting the artwork. You get really nice artwork on the, on the tin, and this looks like dye sublimation printing. Let me double check. Yes, this definitely looks like dye sublimation printing, which is a really, really nice effect on this. I really like seeing it and it makes for a beautiful box and what's really nice also is that it's slightly reflective not through like the color through the tent so the colors are actually very vibrant and pretty and i have reviewed several of the crayola signature products at this time i have uh the blend and shade markers i think i have to double check i can go grab them in a second no, the blend and shade color pencils, the dual tip markers that have a brush tip and a fine tip. I also reviewed the Crayola brush markers that kind of came before these. So from what I was kind of looking at online, I think these are supposed to be Crayola's version of the Tombow ABT, which is fine. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. I'm actually excited to see that Crayola has a blending marker. Actually, these brushes might not be half bad. These definitely look a little more adult than some, of, not in a mature, a little more mature than some of the other Crayola markers. A little bit more like art supplies for older artists. So if I were a teenager, for example, I wouldn't be at all ashamed to be seen using this set. So we're gonna do some swatches. We're gonna test out some blends. They did say um, basically coated marker paper, so I'm gonna grab some of that. Okay, so I think I'm gonna use this really ratty Copic PM pad, or my bleed proof marker pad, sorry. It is the best paper for Copic. So we'll see. Maybe I'll try these on several papers. Maybe I'll try some of the other Crayola markers on this kind of paper. I usually use it on, doo -doo -doo -doo. my brain wants to give up on me. I usually use it on um, watercolor paper, like Fluid 1, not Fluid 100, just regular Fluid, or on Canson Mixed Media XL. So I do usually use, when I do these tests, I do usually do them on marker papers, or nicer papers, just not marker papers. Because I don't even use Copic markers on marker papers. I use them on, sturdier papers. Okay, so we shall begin with bubblegum. And I think, I think I'm gonna save a blender for cool colors and a blender for warm colors. Let's see how that goes. Oh, brush isn't bad. It is a um, fiber brush, not a, hmm. Oh my goodness! These are alcohol markers. What? Y'all, 
This is Crayola's first foray into alcohol markers. I'm gonna dig up, I moved the case out of the way for recording, see if I can find any information. It, because that's the sort of thing you do wanna let people know, because some people find alcohol markers to have um, a very strong fragrance. So let's, let's investigate. Crayola signature blending markers are permanent when dry and they bleed through paper. Protect clothing and uh, during use and cover work surfaces to avoid staining. What? I thought these were going to be like the Tombos, so I thought they were going to be water-based. I don't see anything on here that says they're alcohol-based, but y'all, I know what alcohol marker based mar what alcohol markers smell like. I've worked with them plenty. It just says non-toxic. How the heck does this not say alcohol base? When you buy a Crayola, you usually think they're gonna be water base, right? I have such mixed feelings about this. I do think it should say alcohol markers on here, just, you know, because it's one of those things. Yeah, there's nothing I can find on here that says they're alcohol based. Wow, I feel like I slipped into like an alternate dimension. I know that sounds hyper, hyperbolic, but I do, because I've gotten so used to doing these Crayola reviews and they're water-based and I use like water-based blenders to kind of do blending effects. These are actually alcohol markers with an all right brush tip. And I paid like, I have to double check, but I paid under 20 for these. What? I, I'm, I'm kind of glad Crayola has alcohol markers. I think I've, I've been like, teenagers need this. They enjoy this. Don't make them use Sharpies for this. They'll use Sharpies for this. Please make markers for them. And then it happened, but there was no notification of it. I feel, but I also could see a parent buying these for a much younger child, like a seven-year-old. And I, I wouldn't buy my seven-year-old alcohol markers because the fumes can be a little overwhelming. Wow. I am, if you guys can't tell, I'm also like really excited about this right now. Cause I really feel like I, cause I wasn't gonna review these. Somebody asked me to review them and I was like, eh. And then I had a weak moment on Amazon and I was like, sure, whatever. And now I'm really glad I took their suggestion. So I can show you guys all kinds of tricks with these. And I am super excited because I love doing videos with decent performing, um, less expensive art supplies for teenagers, for people on a budget. I really like being able to do that. So I am really, really, really excited about these actually. And also it doesn't matter if you reserve one tip for um, cools and one for red dark, um, warms. That would matter if we were using water-based markers alcohol-based markers, that really doesn't really matter. I think they're including two because they probably aren't planning on offering these open stock. Wow. I just, I'm really excited now. I mean, I've been enjoying their water-based markers. I really like their blend and shade markers, but I'm so excited that they finally did something kind of different. And in my neck of the woods, I mean, you know, I don't know you, I mean, I know YouTube, but I haven't seen anybody say anything, but just because I haven't seen anybody say anything doesn't mean nobody said anything. Um, but in my neck of the art supply woods, nobody said anything. That's, oh man, I mean, gee whiz. So if you have been watching my channel and you've been nagging your parents for alcohol markers and they're like, no, I'm not gonna buy you any, these could be your in, especially if you were like, well, what about Sharpies? And they're like, I'm not buying you Sharpies to do art with. You're going to kill yourself, kid. These might be your in. I mean, I think you should be honest with your parents about it, but they are Crayola. I also don't want to be like, you can trust a company because I'm never really a big proponent of just wholesale trusting companies. But Crayola does have like 120 years of experience making art supplies for kids. And if they say these are non-toxic, I would like to think they're non-toxic. I am a little disappointed. There's no brown in this, so you can't do a darker skin tone. You've got peach and that, yeah. So it's kind of like, oh, Crayola, do another set. I hope these sell, so Crayola will do another set.
Y'all, I'm seriously so, so hyped about this. I have been doing Crayola product reviews uh, intermittently here and over at netasoup.blogspot.com for like four years now. Um, and I just, they've surprised and impressed me. And I was really expecting to not, I was really just like, oh, well, these are going to be kind of boring. At least it's kind of cool that I get a blender marker. And then, well, bam, alcohol marker is Becca. And I'm just like, oh. Now, let me pull out a little bit. I'm going to scan this for you guys because I know it's kind of hard to see. Um, so we get 16 colors. I'm going to, you can see that the blender doesn't always lighten things up. Like with black, not too much. With gray, a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, I'm going to swatch again, and then I'm going to use a Prismacolor blender because Prismacolor blenders tend to have a lot of oomph. If I can find it. I was also, I've also complained many times that there's nothing new under the sun when it comes for alcohol markers, but I really consider Crayola releasing alcohol markers to be kind of like super unusual and unexpected. And I'm excited about that. Oh, please do like, please Crayola, please, please, please do a multicultural pack for this. You do not know how many teenagers lives you will make so much better. How many 12 year olds lives you will make so much better. I do so many shows. I talk to so many kids who want to be artists and they talk about Copics and they talk about prism colors and all these expensive alcohol markers that they just can't afford. And I mean, it's kids of color and kids from all different countries with all different beautiful skin tones. Please do a multicultural pack with alcohol markers so that these kids can have those alcohol markers. Wow, the Prismacolor doesn't seem to be affecting it much. Um, please do that because you would make so many kids happy. And please brand it as like a comic or a manga set so they know at first glance what they're getting. You would make them so thrilled. And also please hire me to do some tutorials for you. But really though, multicultural set is way more important and you should please, please, please do that. Please, you'd make so many kids happy. Don't market these at crafters. I mean, you can, you totally can and you should, but please remember your, your 14 year olds, your 12 year olds, your arty kids whose parents won't buy them expensive art supplies because there's a lot of arty kids whose parents won't buy them art supplies. Please remember them. Or the kids who live in like rural towns like Luling, Louisiana, where there are no art supply stores and maybe their parents don't want to drive all the way to Metairie to go to David Art. Please think about those kids. Okay, so the red is like really into, need to clean that out. But I'm begging on their behalf, but they should beg too because I know their words have more meaning than mine do. Multicultural pack would be amazing. That's why they said to use, and that's why they have their blending marker paper, which I still would rather not review unless you guys really want to see that happen. Mostly because when I use alcohol markers, I do use other types of paper. So I will probably do a multi swatch thing with these. And that way we can see. And so that red really kind of got into my Prismacolor. So some of this color is the leftover red from the red up here that I picked up with my Prismacolor. Now their blending marker didn't actually have that problem, which is interesting. So in case you guys do not know, alcohol markers tend to be dye based. They tend to be not archival, so in a few years, the colors will have shifted. Um, they're not light fast, so if you're gonna display artwork made with these kind of markers, if, including Copic and Prismacolor, the, even the more expensive ones, you really wanna keep it behind maybe UV protective glass, away from direct sunlight, or maybe store them in an archival box. I mean, this is for the stuff you really love and treasure. Putting them in like those photo or even just page protectors that you can get at like Walmart will help. So if you do something that you really want to, to last, and I know you don't necessarily have the budget for, you know, expensive archival stuff, 
you can put it in like the protective sleeves you can get at like Walmart or Office Depot or any place like that Target. And I am also going to do some compatibility tests, not just with the blender, but with some of the other, other some of the other alcohol markers I own, just to see if, you know, you bought some like Blick Studio brush markers or whatever to help augment the collection. I know if you're buying the Crayola ones, you're probably not going to be buying the Blick because Blicks are really nice. So I would assume you would just get the Blick ones. I'm mean, not that these are bad, but you know have more color range with the Blick or with Copic or with Prismacolor. That's why they need to do a multicultural set, please. So this is on the Copic PM paper. This is the blender that came with the Crayolas. This is a Prismacolor blender. I have here a Sakura of America. This is gonna be Copic proof or alcohol marker proof when fully dry. So it's good for marking off where my blender ended and I find it helpful for me to take these notes while I'm doing the testing rather than trying to remember okay so now that some time has passed the black has faded a little bit Let's do a rainbow blend. And since these are alcohol markers, we can use a different technique than I usually use with water-based markers. Because these are a little bit easier to move around without tearing up your paper surface. And you can layer your colors, which I'll show you guys in a few minutes. And that way you can get kind of more colors than you otherwise would have. I'm so excited about this, you guys, because I know so many kids, so many parents who ask me about good art supplies for their kids. That's why I have so many videos about that topic. I'm not going to go to black. I'm going to go to pink. And now I have another affordable option for them. And that always makes me really happy. Like being able to help kids and parents, especially kids who want to go into art or illustration who enjoy doing it as a hobby and maybe want to do it professionally and parents who are supportive of that are just amazing. My mom was pretty supportive of it when I was growing up and that was really unusual where I came from. A lot of people were like, don't you worry about her going into this? So, you know, I really want to help parents help their kids without spending a bunch of money. And I know there's a lot of channels that kind of act like you have to have all the stuff in order to do the thing. And it makes, I mean, having all the stuff is nice, but like, you don't have to have all the stuff. You can, and this is a lot nicer than what I had access to when I was growing up too. So I'm also really excited about that because 14 year old me would be so pumped, so pumped about these. All right, I'm gonna move on down to the next line. So pumped because the nicest thing I had when I was 14 was a 20 pack. They didn't even have the big packs of Crayola Super Tips, the 20 pack of Crayola Super Tips. And there really wasn't a whole lot I knew how to do with those. So. And I know this is marketed more at like crafters, brush letterers. I mean, there's beautiful illustration on the cover. So clearly they are thinking that maybe there are artists who'd be interested in this. And I'm really hoping the kids who need this, who could really benefit from having these, will be able to have them. Maybe some schools will be able to get them since it's Crayola. 
All right, so that is our rainbow blend. And even though we have some colors, right, that wouldn't necessarily be the chromatic choice in order, it blends very smoothly. I'm gonna show you guys how you can get a little extra color out of your markers because the nice thing about alcohol markers you can layer water-based markers but with alcohol markers you can usually get several layers of color all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to swatch each color first and that way it'll give the prior layer time to dry because if you want if you want a nice smooth transition blend you work wet into wet but if you want a distinct like shadow kind of thing, like you're trying to do layers and you're trying to imply, oh, this is a shadow, then you let it dry. And, it, and with alcohol markers, they evaporate very, very quickly. That's one of the reasons why they don't abrade the paper surface the way water-based markers often do. So these are not and OT, not water-based markers. These are alcohol-based markers. You can use them with your water-based markers, but they're not going to interact with each other. That would make it kind of a mixed media piece. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just different media. making a nice big swatch because I think we can get three layers of color variation with these. And I'm really looking forward to doing some field tests with these for you guys. You can treat them like tutorials. I do have a lot of nice alcohol marker tutorials here on this channel. And now maybe you guys can get to enjoy along because you'll have your own alcohol markers. And already these are probably going to be good for crafters who want to dabble with alcohol markers. They're not sure if they want like Copic or if they want to get like a set of Blick. These could be a very easy way to figure out if you like alcohol markers. And the tips have not started to fray yet. Usually with the, like um, when I was doing the water-based markers the other day with the the Crayola brush markers, the ones that kind of preceded these, they were starting to fray really quickly. All right, so layer two. I'm gonna do the same thing. Just go down the line. Should point out also I am getting a little bit lightheaded. So you want to work in a nice well ventilated area. Maybe turn on a fan, open a window. I have my door open. It's not like this is closed circulation but little additional circulation would be good. But I'm also talking a lot. I'm inhaling a lot and I'm capping and uncapping markers. So you know your experience may be slightly different. But if you're not used to using alcohol markers, I wouldn't want you to get sick or get a headache from them. So it's easy to be safe and that way you don't have to be sorry. Now I've definitely gotten headaches from working with alcohol markers before, so. Probably gonna end up ditching the trays that come with these. Not too big a fan of the trays. For the larger ones that have larger sets that have like 32 markers in them, uh, the trays kind of help keep everything in color order, which is easy for me to work quickly, but there aren't really that many markers. That was the same color. Hopefully it'll dry. Sometimes some of these peaches get kind of fluorescent-y when you blend them out or when you layer them, so it's always good to note 
this orange is almost like a nice kind of salmon-y pink. These will be a fun challenge to do a person field test. And you know, I gotta draw some like really bright and colorful character for these because I mean, come on, come on. I have to, it's the law. The art supply police will come and confiscate them from me and all my other art supplies and give them to someone else who can do something bright and fun. All right, layer three. I think once I finish doing this, I'm gonna call the video here. And that way it's still mm, short enough that people can digest it and get the information they need. But I'm gonna have some follow-up videos that are gonna come out later that will kind of demonstrate different techniques and different compatibilities with other marker brands. So that way, hopefully, everybody can get the information they need in a form that works for them. And I may even do a write-up about these. I've kind of quit doing alcohol marker write-ups just because they're very time consuming and everything kind of gets covered here in the video. I'm sorry for shaking the camera. So I was at Target a couple weeks ago, I guess, and I was kind of looking for these because that was when someone first asked me to review them. And it's like, well, if I find them in person, I might pick them up. And I couldn't find them at my Target. Um, and I know my Walmart doesn't, the Walmart in Luling, Louisiana, rather, the Walmart I go to, even though it's very far away from here, um, the Walmart in Luling doesn't usually carry the signature stuff either. So I'm gonna pop a Amazon link in here for you guys, and it ships directly from Crayola. You could also order it from Crayola if you like, but I would check my in-person store too, just to see. We can even get three colors from black. So I will scan this sheet for you guys and I guess I will put it up on the blog. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am really excited. If you guys can't tell, I'm not always this excited about art supply reviews, but I'm really excited about this because this has really good implications for younger artists. I am really excited about the Crayola Signature blending markers. These were purchased out of pocket. You get 14 colors plus two colorless blenders. And I can't wait to see you guys with the next video for this. And hopefully I can help some of you guys start learning how to use alcohol markers, which makes me really excited. I'll see you guys again really soon. Have a great day, guys. Bye.